what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so today we're gonna be talking about my new speedrun tb which i got live on stream so yeah i might do a few more no mic speedrun streams but definitely not for a random seed because there's no way i'm beating this time I, it was just way too lucky so you saw at the start i looked around i was gonna reset but i saw this ocean here so i was like oh hey let's just check to see if there's a shipwreck so I just come over here and bam, over to the left, the resolution isn't the greatest, but you can kind of see the full shipwreck. I see it, you see me punch there. I'm like, oh dude, there's no way that's a full shipwreck. So then I'm heading that way. And I'm heading in with no wood, because a full shipwreck, you can, you can get wood straight out of there, and it's usually faster if you just graph your tools straight up out of iron there, and then, because you can get the iron from the shipwreck. So I'm heading straight for the shipwreck with nothing on me. And here we are at the shipwreck. I'm gonna check this room right here, usually has the iron and all the good stuff. So I grab six iron and two diamonds. That is great, that is enough for me to enter right there. But I, I usually want a bit more when I do a shipwreck run, so I can get an iron axe. So I'm, I grab that buried treasure and I'm gonna get the iron from that buried treasure to make myself like full iron tools instead of just pickaxe bucket and flint steel. And mining the wood is what I meant, you can mine the wood from the shipwreck and you don't need to mine a tree when you have a full boat like this. So yeah, I grab that door. Doors are good because they let you breathe underwater and now See, I placed the door here because I'm also going to mine this wood and I'm going to grab that chest right there. 47 wheat is insane. I've never seen that much wheat on a shipwreck before. So, but yeah, that's great. So now I just grab that. I'm mining this wood. And once I get this, I'm going to head over to that buried treasure. So there I use the birch wood to make the crafting table that's so all the wood in my inventory is the same type that helps with not having your inventory be a mess and messy inventories are really annoying here you normally craft a big axe there but i made myself an axe the, the reason for that is because i'm gonna get iron from the buried treasure so i don't really need it to make the big axe right now and it's better to make an axe so i can quickly mine the crafting table and be on my way I'm going to turn the volume down a bit as I head over to the buried treasure. So there I'm checking, I see that it's the southeast, so I just look. And there is southeast, so I'm headed that way. So right here you can see the second shipwreck. It's another full shipwreck, which is insane. Full shipwrecks are like the best type of shipwreck you can get, and this seed had two of them right there. So I'm just going to check this shipwreck right here, instead of going to the buried treasure. So yeah, I go down. This room again. This one had a bit more iron, this one had 10 iron. And... Then I'm, I'm going to check the food chest. It had carrots, which is good, because then I can craft those into golden carrots when I get gold. I'm going to craft myself the bread. I know that chest is going to have a buried treasure, but it's going to probably be the same to the one I already have, so there's no point in grabbing it. I just grab that there, grab the door, and I'm gone. I'm still going to check the buried treasure. I didn't need to, but I wanted to have a bit more iron just for security. So now I'm at the chunk with the shipwreck, and I'm going to check my chunk coordinates to where they are 9-9. Nine, nine. Because the shipwreck, I mean the buried treasure, always spawns in chunk coordinates 99. So you see me, I dig down on 99, open it, and it has a ton of iron and some food. So I got myself diamond shovel. I didn't make the pickaxe, and the reason why I didn't make the iron pickaxe before was because if the shipwreck had. Stupid! The shipwreck. If the buried treasure had one more diamond, I could have made a diamond pickaxe instead, but. If that wasn't the case, so I just used the diamond and a shovel, and I'm gonna make myself iron armor, because I just have the extra iron. And here, I'm wasting time, I'm debating what armor I should make. 
Because I want to have one piece of armor to just be gold armor instead. I decide that's going to be the helmet, and I don't make myself a helmet, and I make the rest of iron armor. That was a time loss that could have been avoided. I did not have to spend as much time thinking there. I lost like a good 30 seconds because of it. So here I'm just putting all the stuff I don't need in that chest, because I don't need it. I get Flint's second try because I'm just that lucky. My Flint luck was insane this entire stream, by the way. It was... My Flint luck is just disgusting. I don't know why. My RNG in general tends to be absolute garbage, but with Flint, I, I always get Flint on like my first five tries. You couldn't see the magma below the ravine, so I decided to just go past it, but now I changed my mind and I decided, hey, let's just... I can just swim all the way down here and then dig for lava normally under the magma ravine. Which is not a magma ravine, I don't know why I said it's a magma ravine. I just happen to find four more diamonds here. And now I can get myself dripped out with a diamond helmet. Swim over to the edge of this ravine, hope there's magma. Which you're gonna see there is not. So I'm just gonna... Place the door right here and dig down to Y11 and tunnel there. I'm gonna do a trick where I offhand the door and quickly right click right after I break the block. That way it places another door and I can just dig down underwater like that. And once I'm past that, I'm just gonna dig down normally to Y12 for some reason because I'm bad. Stupid! You usually wanna dig down to Y11 when you're looking for lava, but in this case I dug down to Y12 because I'm bad at the game. See here I notice that I'm at the wrong Y level and I go one down, the water bucket again, and we are digging towards a lava pool, hopefully. You see, there we go, lava pops on the subtitles and they look to be on the left, so I just dug a bit to the left. You can now hear it, and there we go, I found the lava pool, and I'm gonna make myself the portal. That was... lag. We are... about to enter the nether at the 9.35 mark, which is not the greatest. My previous BB, the 51 minute one, had like a, a 12 minute nether entry, so I'm ahead by 3 minutes. So here I'm gonna shift a 3, I see there's nothing in the bike, so no fortress, and boom, there's a bastion right there though. So I'm just gonna run this bastion and worry about the fortress later. Grabbing these mushrooms because in shipwreck seeds I never trust that I'm gonna have enough food, so it's always good to just grab mushrooms. Another thing I never trust is the piglins not deciding to murder me for whatever reason when I'm in the Bastion, so I'm mining this gold to make myself gold boots so the piglins won't try to murder me when I'm in the Bastion. It's a bit of a time loss, but to me it just helps, because there are many times when I go in without gold armor and they just all of a sudden jump me and murder me. A lot of the routes get a lot harder when you don't have gold armor. So I have some brown mushrooms and red mushrooms, which is enough I'm going to make myself mushrooms too if I run out of bread. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I see a bit of scuffed block placement there. I'm going to use this boat to get down. It's a trick where you don't take fall damage if you fly down with a boat. And right now I can tell that it is a bridge bastion. Now, bridge bastions are usually the slowest to route, but they are also the easiest ones. If you're in a bridge bastion, the odds, the odds of you dying to a piglin are very low, but it's also a slower route. You're gonna take longer to get all the trades. I'm just mining the gold on the channel. So I hear some piglins angry there, so I'm crafting that early, so, I, so if they try to attack me, I can just toss it down at them. Yeah, see, that guy's about to shoot me with a crossbow, and I just throw some gold on the floor to distract him. And here I leave one gold block, I'm gonna need the gold block in, in its full form. 
and I grabbed that gold. For some reason, I stopped to wait for this guy's trade. I didn't need to do that, especially because he gave me salt sand. But after that, I'm going to do the route. I'm going to do a bit of block parkour here. You've seen this route in my band player's guide to speedrunning if you watched it. But yeah, I need these stairs. It's a bit of a scuff way to route a bridge mansion. There's better ways, but they're more complicated and harder. Yeah, just dig through here, place those stairs there to help the piglins get through, mine that block, and start throwing gold in. I attracted that piglin, I put that to block the piglins off, place that gold block and break it, and now there's a bunch of piglins mad at me that are gonna come to murder me, and I can dig them into that hole so they can trade me for stuff that I need instead of them trying to assassinate me. And there I have three piglins in there, it's not the greatest. You usually want more, so I'm just gonna bridge this way, because there's also a chance for chests to spawn this way, and those chests can have obsidian, they can have more gold. But there's also gonna be more piglins here that I can try to bait into that hole, so... Right here, there's none visible, so I'm just gonna loot the chest. There's big step, I wanna keep big step, so I'm just gonna do that. And the arrows, because if I find the crossbow, I can speed up the end fight a bit. You don't need the arrows, but it's good to have. So here I break another gold block, and I'm looking for piglins that might get mad at me. And you can see two there that come try to mug me. I'm just going to bait them into that hole where the others are. Now what that's going to do is they're going to trade the gold faster. I'm just going to stand there and pick up all their trades. Start throwing out stuff I don't need. My inventory is a mess by now, by the way. In shipwreck runs, I've found you usually have an extremely messy inventory. And while I'm waiting on the trades, I'm just going to try to pirate the fortress to find out which way it is and how far. In 32 chunks, I, it looks like I'm getting nothing. My screen is shaking like crazy. And I just... At that moment, I realized this run is doesn't look that good because the fortress is extremely far. And that's not something you want to see. But there I have three stacks of strings, three stacks of pearls. I'm just looking for a bit more fire res, and then I can be gone. And my entire inventory is blocks, different types of food. I have like five different types of blocks, four different types of food. All taking up inventory space, plus the pearls that I need and all the other stuff I need. Here I just swap to the fish for food, because I have less fish, and that's going to clear up an inventory spot faster. I could have thrown out big step, but I want to keep big step. It makes a hard decision to throw out some of my blocks. And then with free fire res, I can be gone. So, I'm gonna try to leave the mess and try the pirating thing again once I move a bit in towards another quadrant. Because I talked about this in the bad player's guide on fortresses and bastions spawn in quadrants. And this, for this bastion being here means that, that that is the only structure in this quadrant. So now I have to go to a different quadrant if I want to find a fortress. So I'm going to the... So that bastion was in the positive, positive quadrant. And for some reason I'm going towards positive Z. Not really the play. And here I realize... that and I find a negative negative x is that way so I just pearl that way and I'm gonna go to the negative x quadrant to try to pyray
I'm gonna pat right here, because I'm like, how has the not shown up, showed up in the pie chart? It better not be another Bastion. If it's another Bastion, I'm gonna lose it. But there, I see a mob spawner shows up in the pie chart. That means it's most likely a fortress. So here, I'm just gonna do the pie ray. I'm gonna try to find where it is. I talked about the strategy in the bad players catch a speed running. There, the mob spawner is 21 chunks away. That's what I found. So then I go to 20 and I try to find in which direction the spawner is. So it's not that way. It's not that way. It's not that way. It is that way. It just took a bit to show up. So I'm just gonna book it this way. And here, I see the fortress. And this is where the run starts to kind of get good. I'm in the fortress at 23 minutes. I think this is this was my best pace ever. This might be my best fortress time ever. Or it might be my second best. Fortress with Bastion, that is. Of course, if I just find the fortress before the Bastion, it doesn't quite count. In here, I'm just... I work through which blocks I'm gonna use and just decide on nether rack because why not? And here I'm just I'm already in the open part of the fortress, so I'm just gonna look for blaze spawners. Time lapse of me. Oh, oh, oh the movement. Oh, I actually cracked gamer movement right there. I'm just gonna have it sped up. But yeah, find a stray blaze. Or right, that wither is gonna mug me. I'm just gonna do a trick that I learned to kill withers where you You tear up three blocks right here and they're gonna try to chase you by going up there and you can just hit them off. This guy's gonna follow me here as well. Gonna get there. I get fireballed by a blaze because my luck is trash. I can still go to combo the wither off. And there we go. There's a few stray blazes here, so I just drink the fire res and it's time to start farming blaze rods. There's a trick where you lower the render distance to increase the spawn rates of stray blazes, but I don't do that because it also increases the spawn rate of wither skeletons, and I'm not that good at the game where I can take a bunch of wither skeletons. But fortunately, I'm getting a lot of blaze spawns here. So I, there, I have three blaze rods without even finding the spawners. And there's a fourth blaze rod. Just brawl to this blaze. He drops a fifth. The, the RNG here was insane. Each blaze has a 50% chance of dropping, and I think every single blaze so far has dropped a rod. Okay, that was all the straight blazes that were there, so I'm just gonna look for the spawner, and nope, there's two more blazes. And this one drops, because why wouldn't it? And then if this one drops, I'm just gone. I just need seven rods. I technically could leave on six, but I want seven just to be safe. And this one drops as well, so I just go seven for seven on blaze rods, which is insane. And I look at my coordinates, they are trash for blind travel. So blind traveling means that you place it a nether portal to leave the nether at the about the coordinates of a stronghold ring because strongholds generate on rings that are centered in zero zero and and in the nether that means like the first stronghold ring is gonna be in, from like x100 to x200 or something like that it's not exactly that but it's about that so it's so I'm at 430, negative 200, so I gotta get to, like, so I gotta get to a spot that's between 100 and 200 blocks away from the origin. Oh, 
Oh, now that I'm here, I'm at 170, negative 80, which is about decent. But I want to be a bit safer. I know that 150, 150 is generally a good coordinate, so I get a bit closer to that. So, here, I'm, for some reason, I use glowstone there. That is a dumb decision by me. Because now I mind that glowstone is not going to drop all its stuff back. See, I place two glowstone and only get one back. And, but now I have my exit portal pretty near the ideal blind coordinates. And this is where the run starts to pick up pace, because I'm going to distance estimate here, and you'll see what happens. See that there's a polar bear there? I don't want to deal with that, so I just craft my eyes far away from it. I'm going to try to distance estimate here. I just place that there so I don't slide on the ice. And first angle is exactly negative 69.9. Very nice number. So I'm computing that in my head, so now i got to turn 90 degrees off to the side and do four sprint jumps. And this gets kind of scuffed because I have to swim, so I can calculate kind of how far four sprint jumps would be swimming. And here I'm going to throw my second eye. And the angle is 74.4, so... So the trick here is that you subtract the difference, you take the difference from between the two angles and do a thousand divided by that, and that's the distance to the stronghold. So that was a difference of about 4.5, which means the stronghold is 200 blocks away. So that's that. That's when I know this run has potential, because I'm at under 30 minutes out of the nether and within 200 blocks of the stronghold. I'm just going to head over 200 blocks. Yeah, here I throw another eye, because I'm kind of there, so I throw that eye, and it's still that way. So I just pick it up, and keep on going. Fortunately, I have a boat, so I just use that. I turn on trunk borders, because I know that I'm very close to the stronghold here, and I'm planning on triangulating. I throw it near the trunk edge there, but I see that it's still that way, so I'm just going to hop over a bit more. You know, grab that eye, and hit a bit of lag. My, my computer started to lag a bit towards the end of the run. But here what I'm doing is I'm going a bit off the angle, and I'm going to throw the eye and see which way... It goes there, I'm going to try to plot where the two lines intersect. And since the end went backwards so close where it went forwards, I know it has to be one of these trunks. I throw it near the intersection, it's this trunk. And the ice should surface around the 8 8 trunk coordinates, so I stand there till the ice surfaces, and I'm digging down near the 4 4 coordinates, because that's where the stronghold is guaranteed to generate. And here I just pause because I want to message Iron Man to tell him that I'm on good pace for PB. He was on chat earlier, and you can see he had to leave. So, so I'm just messaging him, hey, if you want to hop back on, I'm about to beat the Ender Dragon. I'm about to beat my PB by over 10 minutes. So I'm messaging him. I use the game capture, so it's not showing the DMs. I'm not leaking my DMs with Iron Man, don't worry. And... Here I'm digging down, and I should eventually hit the stronghold. There we go. That is the starter staircase. This is another reason why this run was so good. Because this stronghold, I'm gonna check the the walled off areas for hidden. Normally, here I'm turning down my render distance, by the way, because I, I was lagging a bit, and I didn't want to lag as much. Normally, these have five directions you can go in, those rooms there, but four of those. I mean, three of those were dead ends, so I only had to check two ways, and this one is a dead end as well. So now here there is only one way that the portal room can be, which is huge. Check that one, also a dead end. So I'm just, I'm just going this way, it has to be this way. And here you can see I look left, there it is. I'm drinking a fire res because you see how there's lava down there. I've missed this block clutch a few times, which has gotten me killed. So I'm not taking the chance, that's why I drank the fire res. 
Here, messaging him again. I did not see his message in chat there. So I'm messaging him again to let him know that I found the portal room. And cleaning out my inventory a bit because I'm going to need space for the beds. Placing the remaining eyes and we're in the end at 33 minutes. I'm turning my render back up because I want to be able to see the dragon. And here we go. I'm I'm sweating right now. This is like my best pace by like 10 minutes. All of my almost PB runs that I threw before were like I was pr probably gonna beat it by a few minutes. This I was on pace to beat my PB by 10 minutes, which is insane. So I craft all my beds. I don't craft a respawn anchor because I'm bad. I think I realized later that I made a mistake there. Build the one cycle platform. And I don't have a crossbow or arrows that I can use to half bow to the strategy to make the dragon push faster. So I'm just gonna do the old waiting strat. So I'm fireballing while I'm trying to craft my respawn anchor. Very nice of him. But yeah, eventually. The dragon's breath catches me. It's fireballing me again. That dragon did not chill. Literally no chill dragon. But I'm gonna pre-place my respawn anchor there and charge it up with glowstone. And now I'm just gonna head over to the north side and wait for the dragon to perch. And when the dragon perches, I'm gonna do the one cycle and kill the dragon. Normally this takes about a few minutes. Another reason why this run was so good and why I don't think I'll beat it anytime soon is because the perch was really fast. You'll see here. It's about to start its perch approach. See, it's starting to head over to the opposite side. I see it turn towards there, and that's when I know when it turns right there, right straight towards the opposite side, that it's about a perch. And I'm gonna do the one cycle and kill it. Thank you for watching, this is, this PB was really insane, it's, the fact that I just beat my PB on stream, it is really cool that it, and then I just decided, hey, why not stream my multiple failed speedrun attempts, and I end up beating my PB by over 10 minutes, so that is really good, really glad I got this on stream. And yeah, thank you for watching, like and sub or I send you to Gulag and goodbye.